make sense of land law in today's environment. To make sense of what is unique land laws. To make sense of the extraordinary importance of land law in today's Hawaii. To make sense of the extraordinary importance of land law in today's Hawaii. We must understand our unique past. We must understand our unique past. And, and how closely we remain. We remain intertwined with a world, world which thrived, thrived only a short, a short while, while ago. Aina is a specific term meaning Ukumaikamoku ka Aina a sense of homeland, birthplace, deriving from the noun or verb Ai, meaning food or to eat. The cultivation of wet taro required elaborate development of banked level plots. But nowhere else was it a systematic and engrossing occupation. The date of the first human settlement in Hawaii now is believed to be several hundred years after the birth of Christ. The Hawaiian commoner who farmed, fished, and gathered was the foundation of the Hawaiian social order. In remote places today, one can still see clearly how his taro farm was laid out along the stream and how the life-giving water was so carefully managed in complex stonework systems of irrigation. The Hawaiian farmed other crops which balanced and varied the family diet. The pig was domesticated. Fish were farmed in rock-lined ponds on the shore or captured from the sea. This society, which the explorer James Cook found in the year 1778, was perceived by Cook and many other observers of early contact as a remarkably thriving society. Not a single spot of ground that was capable of improvement was left unplanted. Indeed, it appeared hardly possible for the country to be cultivated to a greater advantage or to yield a larger supply of food. Lieutenant James King of Cook's third voyage. Cook estimated the population at 400,000. Today's scholars estimate the population to have been conservatively half of Cook's number or expansively more than twice Cook's number. The land division, the Ahupua'a, ran from the peak of the mountain down through the wooded upland, through the cultivated valley, the coastal plain, and into the surrounding sea. The Ahupua'a was a kindly base of subsistence which typically generated an economic surplus. This economic surplus supported the development of highly skilled manufacture, crafts, art, and performance, and all of this was deeply interwoven with Hawaiian religion. The origin of taro is identified with Wakea, the progenitor of man. The staple of life, Poi, was personified as Haloa, the son of Wakea. It is also associated with Kane, of life and as such was sacred along with the plant itself. The land system was dramatically different from today's. It was a system of use rights, not property rights. As numerous scholars have explained, the Hawaiian commoner evolved a set of rights to use but not to own the land. A constitution adopted by the Kingdom of Hawaii in the year 1840 said that while all the land belonged to the king, quote, It was not his own private property, 
It belonged to the chiefs and people in common. Mai Van Lam, researcher. It belonged to the chiefs, to the chiefs and people. The pressures on the ancient system were many, diverse, and persistent. Foreigners holding land were very naturally anxious to have secure and permanent titles, not subject to the uncertainties and limitations of the existing system. Ralph Kuykendall, historian. In 1843, a British warship, in response to a dispute over a land lease, took over the government of Hawaii for five months. To the Hawaiian kingdom, the lesson must have been clear. Its independence was at the whim of great Western powers, whose nationals increasingly desired to own their own lands. Neil Levy, professor of law. By 1846, the changeover from shared rights to property rights had begun in earnest with the formation of a land commission. Unless the people, the real cultivators of the soil, can have an absolute and independent right in their land, unless they can be protected in those rights and have what they raise as their own, they will inevitably waste away William Lee, land Commissioner. By 1848, the king signed an agreement, the Great Mahili, the Great Division. First, the Mahili divided Hawaiian society's overlapping interest in the land, and then it divided the land into parcels. The often repeated goal of the Mahili was to divide the land fairly. What really happened is this. The king received nearly one-fourth of all the landmass of Hawaii. The government received over a third. A total of 245 chiefs together received over a third. The Hawaiian commoner received less than 1% of Hawaii. With the institution of property ownership, the individuals who understood ownership quickly acquired it. The great majority of native Hawaiian commoners became alienated from the land. So, with all of this as background, it becomes even more remarkable that the vision and the concepts of the old system have survived and in recent years have re-emerged. Through a series of decisions stretching from the late 1960s, the court recognized the validity of both Native Hawaiian and Anglo-American tenets of jurisprudence. At points of unresolvable conflict and contradiction between the two cultures, the court would draw upon precepts and traditions of the Hawaiian culture. Carol Santoki Dodd, author. By law today, the ancient system takes precedence over English common law. In recent years, native rights to access traditional homesteads actually have been strengthened. Tenant rights have been strengthened. Beaches up to the vegetation line are held in common by the public. New land formed by volcanic eruption is publicly owned. Surface water and groundwater are publicly owned. So, is it any wonder that land law is such a source of ongoing dispute? Is it any wonder? Is it any wonder that to make 
sense of man law in today's Hawaii. We must understand our unique past. We must understand how closely we remain intertwined with a world with a world which thrived which thrived only a short